Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Today I'm going to go through an upgrade of the beginner's build PC that I did in the previous videos. Here's the beginner's PC. I've got the side panel off at the moment because I'm going to put a graphics card in it. Now in the previous build we used a APU in the, in, the, in the PC, which includes graphics. While it's great for doing basic tasks, if you want to do any kind of gameplay at all, you've really got to compromise on the quality of the settings, which means you're really not going to appreciate the game in all its splendor. But also, if you're going to be building a PC like this, I'm also conscious that you, you're not going to want to spend how much money you have on a, on a basic PC and then spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on an advanced graphics card. So you've got to be able to balance price for performance. And at the moment, when I'm building this machine, the price per performance king is the RX 570. You'll get great performance in games, you'll get real good stability on reasonably good settings for not a lot of money. You can get RX 570s for around $120, which is an absolute steal. Okay, so when upgrading your, your graphics card, you've got to keep um, a couple of things in mind. One, you need to be able to stick the graphics card in, so you, your motherboard needs to have the relevant slot, which this one does. Two, you need to check, and we'll open this bad boy up. Here we are. You need to check if the graphics card itself needs additional power, which is PCI Express here. Now, this is a really nice card. It's the Power Color RX 570. It's got a pretty damn good cooler for what it is. It also includes a back plate, which helps it keep cool. And this is an absolute bargain for uh, $110. It includes HDMI out, um, um, display, display port, and DVI. Now, that might be gibberish to you, but when you're buying a monitor, you need to make sure that it has one of those three connectors, which most modern monitors do. Okay, so when you're installing a graphics card, in case it's got a black plate, I'm okay putting it up here. I'm just going to put the box out of the way. You need to look at where it's going to come out the back of the case. And you need to look at where the, where the graphics card slot is. Now this graphics card is going to come in and it's got two slots. One, two. So you need to look in your case and go, OK, I need to be able to open up these two slots here. So without further ado, let's open them up. Now, you open up the slots in this case by undoing screws on the outside. In a lot of cases, the screws are on the inside. There's one, scr one screw for each slot. So you take the first screw out, and then the back plate simply comes away. You take the second screw out, And the second plate falls away. Now you have the holes that will line up to the ports on the back. So you need to make sure if there's a clip on the motherboard that you press it so it's pressed down for the graphics card to come in. You line up. Oh, ah. With this particular one. I see. You learn something new every day. There's a cover on top. So that needs to be at least slid back, or as I'm going to do now, is take it off. Because otherwise I can't get the graphics card in. See, you learn every day. Right, now you can see I can maneuver the card around. And line it up with the slot internally. and you simply push it in. And what you should hear is an audible click 
from the graphics card once it's in because the clasp that we push back will be now in place. Next, you need to put the screws that we took out back in place. Not the cover that we took off second that I forgot about, that I learned about, not forgot. And we need to screw the back of the GPU in place. Where's one? And here's two. Okay. Now we need to put this cover back on. And it's got a thumb screw, so you just line it up, push it down in place, and then tighten as much as you can with just using your fingers. And then finally, voila. The GPU is now in the case. Fantastic. Now before I mentioned that you need to check if it needs additional power when you put a GPU into a case. Now in this particular instance, it does. So we need to take the back panel off. Now the back panel's off, we can see the cable management that we did previously. Now here's where the real fun begins because you're gonna need to unpick some of that cable management because the power cable that is required is in the bundle of cables which we merrily pushed underneath so you need to find said bundle of cables and pull them out while trying not to pull any of the other cables out so this time we need to unwind the bundle of cables that we had like so now, PCI Express is this particular cable here, and it immediately becomes available. Now, we need to bundle up the cables that we no longer need, that we've just become available. So it's less now, so it's, more, it's easier to deal with, but we still need to make sure these are tied nice and tight, and we need to deposit them in the basement below the motherboard. So as we did when pulling them out, we need to be careful not to pull any cables out. We simply just place them back into whence they came. Now, like we did when we were doing all the other cables, we need to make sure that when we bring the graphics, the graphics cable through, we bring it through to where the motherboard is. And that, in that, this particular case, it's the lower opening in the motherboard and bring it through like so. Okay, now if we turn the case around, the PCI Express, they cut as they did with the 24 pin power supply, there's, there, are, there is three and then one connected to the side. They do this because some graphics cards take three pins, some pick four. This one protects the all eight pins, should I say, and there's a little notch on top, so you need to notch the latch to the notch, and then simply push the four in, like so. That's in, Put, pushed in nicely. Okay, so again, we wanna get rid of any excess. Now you'll notice in this particular case that we have a other cable dangling around. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a spare cable tie and I'm going to stop it dangling around by attaching it to the other cable. Like so. Now though, we have another cable at the back to worry about because as you can see, this is nicely dangling around. Now, because I've already put the um, cables in place for the others and I've already tied them down, I am literally just gonna tuck it in for now. You can, if you want, you can untie all of the ones that you've previously done and bring back, or you, what you could do 
is you could just simply take a cable tie that you have left lying around. I only I left have one left over, and you can actually tie this cable to the other cables that are tied to the board. Therefore, stopping it from dangling around. But be careful what you wish for, because if you try and touch it to a cable too tight and you've only got a small cable tie, you make your own life exceedingly difficult. Voila! All the cables nicely tucked away. So now, whoo, I'm going to put the, the case, uh, case sides back on. The graphics card's installed. This now has its own discrete graphics and will perform much better. I hope that was useful. Please leave any constructive criticism below. Also, positive feedback is always welcome. Don't forget to subscribe. Also hit the bell icon so you'll be able to be tell when there's future content, of which I'm trying to do as often as I can. And I hope you're well, and don't forget to take care.